Hello everyone and welcome to Capital Watch for Friday, April 5th, our weekly look at happenings in the Missouri General Assembly. And joining us from our Jefferson City offices is Mike Reed, our Associate Executive Director for Advocacy and our Chief Lobbyist. And Mike, an issue that we continue to watch and be very concerned about is the major tax cut bill uh, that has passed the Senate and we had some action on that over on the House side this week. Yes, the House had a hearing on Senate Bill 26. Uh, this is a major concern to us because the fact that the, there is a tax cut and the uh, tax increase, which is in the sales tax, uh, we believe will not cover the whole. The, uh, the estimates are someplace between $400 million and $900 million in the shortfall. If that happens, then the only place to cut, uh, the biggest place that there is in, in state government, is public education. We think that there needs to be much more uh, looking at this whole situation. Uh, it's very important for our members to contact their local representative and tell them, you know, please vote against Senate Bill 26. This is not in the best interest of kids. It's not in the best interest of public education in the state of Missouri. Uh, we believe if there needs to be a tax cut uh, in order to attract business and, and to run uh, opposition to the state of Kansas, it needs to be a well thought out uh, well-planned situation and in fact it needs to be revenue neutral and this bill is not revenue neutral. And as you said Mike the way the bill is structured right now it has the potential to jeopardize education funding for many years to come doesn't it? Oh that's that's right this is a permanent tax cut and if, uh, and with the Hancock amendment to raise taxes it has to go to a vote of the people so this is a, a situation which could last for a long period of time and uh, it's very troublesome uh, I, I think there needs to be much more uh, thought put into this, much more study, and uh, it's just not in the best interest of students. Another issue that's received a lot of attention during the session, Mike, is the uh, idea of giving school buildings letter grades, and we've seen movement on legislation on that on the House side, and uh, this week we had a hearing in the Senate Education Committee on uh, Senator's version of that bill, Senator Mike Parson of Bolivar, and let's take a look at what he had to say about that bill before the Senate Education Committee. Try to make a grading system more legible for parents. And for two folds, two, uh, several reasons why I believe in this bill. One, I think that parents should know, number one, how their school district's doing, how their schools are doing. I'm not here to try to put extra burden on the school, try to put extra burden on teachers. That's, that's not what my plan is. But I do think you need to be accountable for what we do, and especially when it comes to educating our children. And I think uh, if we all look back to, uh, maybe I'll look a few more years more back than what some of you will, but uh, in the days of school, uh, when you got a report card, that was always a day you was either excited about or you was a little leery going home. And uh, Mike, we have some concerns about that bill as far as uh, uh, letter grades for individual buildings. Tell us about that. Yes, we do. Uh, we appreciate uh, Senator Parsons bringing the, uh, at least the discussion of this, but as the bill as it passed the House was, uh, was slightly different, and I think he is going to be pushing the House bill in the Senate. Uh, the problem is we don't want to dummy down what we're doing, and putting just one letter grade on a uh, building uh, doesn't clearly reflect what is going on in that building. Uh, presently, uh, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education is preparing a new website for each elementary school building, and it will have as many as five different criteria, which are, will have a numeric uh, sum uh, to let people know where they are on a scale of one to a hundred. So uh, a 67, of course, is not doing very well, but it allows people to look at each situation, <coughs> such as student growth, student attendance, uh, uh, various situations such as that. Uh, plus, it will, the new DESE website will have a place to allow the principal of each building to say something about the building so people will get a clearer understanding of what is going on and a place to call to find out. We think that's much better and a much clearer look at what a building has rather than just an ABC grade. Also during this session, Mike, we've been uh, working on the issue of early childhood uh, education and seeking ways to 
uh, increase state support for that. Uh, there was a bill that was heard this week that actually gives local voters an option as far as uh, supporting uh, early childhood education. Tell us about that bill. Yes, that bill uh, right now speaks only to Greene County and it was filed by Senator Dixon. Uh, it was filed at the behest of a number of people from Springfield, including our president, Jerry Lee. Uh, <coughs> the bill, as stated, would allow the people of Greene County or Springfield either one, to vote on a one quarter cent sales tax in order to fund uh, early childhood education. And they would be given grants to uh, various early childhood education groups. So it's not something that would be run by the school system. It would be run by the people in the community. And these grants would be given out to various uh, community organizations to help early childhood education. It's a, it's a new way to look at, this is kind of a test project in Springfield. We would look at the fact that it might be good to allow this in each county in the state of Missouri. Um, so it's a partnership between the school district and the community leaders in order to develop more programs for early childhood education. Another bill that saw some action this week, Mike, would allow uh, school districts to, in effect, hire their own police forces. Tell us about that, that one. That's right. This is a bill that was filed by uh, Representative Sloan from uh, Blue Springs. And she modeled it after the Blue Springs uh, school districts and, and its ability to commission officers. It would allow any school district to commission officers and in essence have their own police force. Uh, but the, in order to do that, you must have approval from all of the police and sheriff's agencies in the, uh, in the school district. So uh, it is a cooperative effort. Uh, but it would, uh, it's a little bit more than school resource officers and, and it allows a, a school police force to uh, be present at, uh, at each district. Well, Mike, we just have a few weeks left in this current uh, session uh, and uh, things are really beginning to move now. Tell us what we can expect for uh, next week in the General Assembly. There are six weeks left uh, in the session and we can expect a lot of things to be happening. It's our understanding that next week probably will be Education Week in the Missouri House of Representatives and at that time they will take up various education bills uh, including Bryce's Law which is a bill that's been around for at least six years. Uh, it is a well-intentioned law but it's something that we have to take a stand against. Uh, what it is 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 a voucher system for students with uh, children with autism and it has a very high price tag. <coughs> it is estimated to cost as much as $20 million a year. Uh, it is, it is, we believe it is not the best way to help students with autism. Uh, there are other bills that are going to be heard. There is the uh, House Bill 631, we believe will be heard, which is the teacher evaluation bill. There is a virtual education bill that will probably be heard. So it should be a big week next week in the House for education. Also, the Senate will be marking up the budget. Uh, that's a process that will take another couple of weeks. Uh, the budget must be passed uh, five weeks from uh, today on Friday, uh, the first Friday, first weekend in May. So that's going to also take up a lot of work in the Senate. It's going to be a busy time. There were late nights this past week, and I anticipate for the next six weeks there will be many late nights spent at the Capitol. All right, Mike Reed, thanks very much for your insight into the legislative process, and uh, good luck as you uh, work with the legislature in these final weeks of the General Assembly. And we'll certainly be keeping you up to date on the goings-on in Jefferson City through this program, through our Legislative Voice newsletter that you receive via email every Friday, and our daily updates on the MSBA website. Thanks for joining us, and we hope you join us again next week for another edition of MSBA's Capital Watch.